Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. Welcome to this week's version of The Porter Report with investigative journalist and historian Gareth Porter, who now joins us from our studio in Washington. How are you doing, Gareth? I'm fine, thanks. Hi, Paul. So what do you got for us this week? Well, this week, I think, is really uh, the headline story is about the way in which uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, campaign to uh, threaten war against Iran has run up against uh, a, a big obstacle, and, and more than an obstacle, which is that the Obama administration has now had uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General uh, Martin Dempsey, uh, in Britain make a statement that has really shaken up uh, the political system in Israel, and I think undoubtedly will uh, cause uh, the government of, of Benjamin Netanyahu to have to reconsider its strategy here. Uh, what Dempsey said was, in the context of talking about the fact that Israel, uh, an attack by Israel on Iran would not be successful, it would not be able to destroy the Iranian nuclear program, it would set it back, and of course, uh, as, as the Israeli uh, national security officials themselves have been pointing out ad nauseam in recent months, it would actually have the effect of uh, almost certainly causing Iran to rush uh, to get a nuclear weapon as fast as possible. But then, the real punchline uh, in Martin Dempsey's statement uh, to the press was, if they were to attack Iran, I wouldn't want to be uh, complicit. And of course, by that, he really meant that the Obama administration does not want to be complicit. And that uh, has been, I think, quite correctly read in Israel as a firm no from President Obama to Netanyahu about all this talk of war against Iran. And so, I, you know, the feeling there, as expressed by a former national security advisor uh, to the Israeli government, uh, Giora Island, is that uh, Netanyahu really doesn't have much choice but to back down, uh, to, to step back from this uh, campaign, which seems like it's been going on for years, uh, to convince the world that he and Defense Minister Ehud Barak are really serious about attacking or, or seriously considering about attacking uh, Iran, uh, bringing it to a close, uh, trying to find a safe face, uh, uh, face saving right. uh, withdrawal from now, that. Now, you would have expected Romney to jump all over this, uh, and, but uh, how much has he been jumping all over it? It seems to me it's been it's somewhat muted. Well, this is another factor that I think plays into the political calculus, the shifting political calculus in Jerusalem, which is that, uh, no question about it, uh, Netanyahu really hoped and anticipated that the Republican nominee um, and the GOP would make uh, the uh, alleged uh, flaccid policy of, of the Obama administration toward Iran a major campaign issue. and basically attack Obama for not uh, taking the, uh, the Israeli red line, which is that if Iran doesn't cease and desist uh, its uranium enrichment completely, that the United States would then uh, threaten to attack Iran uh, next year sometime. And so now you have uh, uh, the, the reality has been that the GOP and Romney did not really make much of an issue of Iran at all during the convention. Uh, comparatively speaking, it was really a very small part of the, uh, the, the convention, and there was no threat by Romney uh, or, or promise, I per perhaps should say, to take on the Israeli red line. There was no, uh, no bombastic statement that, uh, you know, if I'm elected president, I will uh, um, give an ultimatum to the Iranians. And such you know, as and the, what do you make of that? Why do you think that is? Okay, you, well, given the money well, Sheldon Adelson and other people are throwing... My co-author on this piece at IPS, uh, Jim Loeb, uh, has, has uh, analyzed the GOP convention pretty carefully and, and also the politics within the uh, Romney camp. And he points out that there's some evidence that the uh, neoconservatives who seem to be in the saddle in terms of foreign policy advisors to uh, Romney, may have suffered uh, a big setback during the, the Romney trip, uh, the foreign trip where he went to Israel, uh, Poland, and the UK, all countries which fit into uh, the neoconservative and 
Israeli uh, agenda of uh, trying to uh, basically uh, drum up support for war against Iran. Um, and during that trip, uh, Romney stumbled, uh, didn't uh, make a very good, uh, give a very good account of himself. And in general, the neocons, I think, uh, were blamed for a trip that really didn't do him uh, much good at all and, and probably hurt him. And that as a result of that, the so-called realists um, within that camp, who, who are still, still pretty conservative, but uh, by no means share the uh, kind of John Bolton enthusiasm for uh, an attack on Iran, uh, have gained a good deal of ground within the Romney camp and indeed may now have been in a position to call the shots in terms of how Romney handled this issue at the convention. And, and do you think this has something to do with how much the military leadership is against this attack on Iran? I remember when Cheney was pushing this and there was, it looked like uh, something was going to happen. Seymour Hirsch was writing about the possi imminent possibilities of an attack on Iran. There was a whole uh, uh, group of retired generals that came out publicly. They wrote in the New York Times and the Washington Post against an attack on Iran. I mean, it seems like the Pentagon, uh, mostly its leadership, has been against this for quite some time. Has Romney got some sense of this and perhaps doesn't want to come out against them as well? Well, I think we're actually talking about two different uh, militaries who have uh, equally been opposed to the idea of an attack on Iran by either Israel or, or, well, certainly in the case of the United States, Israel or the United States, but, but the Israeli military also. Uh, I think both of these militaries have been a huge factor in what I think is the debacle of uh, the Netanyahu strategy here. Uh, on one hand, there's no doubt about it, the U.S. military, as I've been saying for a long time, uh, has made it extremely clear uh, to both the Bush administration and the Obama administration that they are absolutely adamantly opposed uh, to any uh, thought of, of an attack on Iran under any circumstances uh, because of the extreme danger to U.S. military assets in the Gulf region. They are extremely vulnerable both uh, within the uh, waters of the, uh, the Arabian Gulf or the Persian Gulf uh, and on the land, uh, the U.S. military installations, essentially armed installations in Qatar, in UAE, and elsewhere uh, in, the, uh, in the Middle East. So uh, no doubt that the U.S. military has played a big role in influencing the U.S. government and in influencing, I think, the Israeli military as well uh, to uh, take a much more cautionary approach to the whole idea of, of Iran policy and, and really putting a lot of pressure on Netanyahu. And I think uh, this is another factor in the uh, necessity for Netanyahu to really step back from what has been. And, and one uh, of the things I think you pointed out in your article was that some of the advisors to Romney, who are in fact you know, neocons of one sort, certainly very pro-Israel, uh, and, and the, but they've been saying that if, you, if Israel precipitates an attack on Iran that leads to the deaths of American soldiers, it could be a sea change in American public opinion in terms of America's whole relationship with Israel, and they're, they're afraid of, of that becoming a, a discussion on the table. That's right, Paul. That's a very, very big factor in Israeli politics, the whole question of whether Israeli policy, as formulated by uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, really endangers uh, Israel's relationship with the United States, it's not just with the Obama administration, but more generally with the U.S. public. I think the fear there in Israel uh, is very palpable that Netanyahu is leading Israel into a situation where it could very easily lose uh, the credibility, the, the uh, good faith uh, you know, relationship with the United States, with, with the U.S. public the U.S. public would draw back from support for Israel, and then Israel would be in very, very serious uh, trouble. And, and that is an issue that the opposition party, Kadima, has publicly raised quite explicitly. They're attacking uh, Netanyahu on that ground, and, and the military as well has been raising uh, that, that problem. I don't think we should ever have this discussion without re reminding everybody and ourselves that the, but there, there is warfare against Iran going on right now and it's economic warfare and uh, you and I have talked about this before that the threat of war may or may not be real but, but it's certainly kind of diverting everyone's attention from the real economic warfare, the sanctions that are, that are going on against Iran at a time when there's still no evidence that there's, there is a weapons program. 
Well, as you know, I agree with you on that, Paul. I mean, I, I do think that in the short run, those sanctions, as damaging as they are to the Iranian economy, um, and causing already a good deal of uh, pain to the Iranian consumer, uh, are not going to have an impact on the policy of, of Iran towards its nuclear program. Uh, there, there is certainly a possibility that over the next three or four years, that could play a role. But uh, certainly for the time being, uh, the, the sanctions are uh, harming the Iranian people, but not having an effect on policy. And, uh, and it is uh, the case that the Iranian government may uh, decide at some point to respond in some fashion that could be dangerous. Right. Thanks very much for joining us, Keith. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. And if you'd like to see more reports like this, don't forget the donate button, because if you don't do that, we can't do this. <laughs>